Hi, I'm Tim Carter. This is Ask the Builder, and I am streaming live. Glad you're here. Should be a pretty good afternoon. Christmas lights are only going to be on a couple more days. It's getting to the end. The epiphany is in two more days. Uh, <laughs> I uh, just want to um, thank you for being here yesterday. It was my first day back. I was not here for about 10 days, took off for the Christmas New Year's break to get the batteries recharged, to do some deep thinking, and it worked really well. If you have any questions about anything today, pretty much a relaxed day, uh, you know what to do. Put them in the chat. Happy to answer your questions. That's the reason I'm live streaming, is to help you get clarity about the projects at your home and to save you some money. Obi. Good afternoon. How you doing? <laughs> All right. Uh, here's the sponsor of today's live streaming broadcast. Roofing ripoff. Whoa. <laughs> so what's this? It's a pretty cool book. Yeah, that's me on the back. Putting on the uh, Da Vinci Roofscape shingles. Pretty cool book. Um, tells you why the asphalt shingles here in America are falling apart. But more importantly, it tells you what you can do to make your asphalt shingle roof last 40 or 50 years. Uh, you can get it for free. You can get a PDF version for free right over there in the chat. I'll put it in again. Here's the link to get it for free. So go ahead and do it. You're uh, making a big mistake if you don't get it. Uh, because the reason why is roofs are going to get more expensive. They're already expensive. And it's going to get worse. And hey, Louise, how you doing? Uh, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. There's going to be some more videos coming up here, believe me. Uh, but the trouble is, winter has set in in New Hampshire. It's pretty tough to, uh, it's really tough to record videos outside now. This morning, it was 11 degrees uh, above zero. So it's pretty cold. Anyway, roofs, expensive. You don't want to have to do it every eight or 10 years, okay? So just do it one time, and it's the last time you have to do it. Because in the book, I share a secret <clears throat> about <clears throat> something I discovered. I was the first person in the world. It was totally by accident, totally, completely by accident that I discovered uh, that copper reacts chemically with asphalt, and it prevents... Uh, the cross-linking or the connection of asphalt molecules. And that's a good thing. You don't want too many of those things to cross-link. And uh, if they do, then the sh granules fall off, uh, the shingles start to curl. That looks horrible. You do not want cross-linking to happen. And I tell you exactly how to do it in the uh, ebook. It's free. It's yours. Go get it. Go get it right now. Go get it while we're doing the live stream. It only, um, I mean, how, how? you tell me. How long does it take to type your name, your email address, make sure the email address is correct, <clears throat> and click sign up, all right? And then, you know, wait a minute or two, go to your email, you'll see an email from me, open it, click the confirmation link, boom! As soon as you do that, there is the link to the free book. So do it, because I think this book on Amazon, I'm selling it for 15 bucks if you want the paperback. Um, Anyway, it's going to save you a lot of money. Hey, Josh, how you doing? 23, Central Kentucky. Yeah, cold. That's cold. But you know what? Come on, it's January. Uh, it's um, All the smaller lakes around me here in New Hampshire have uh, are already frozen. In fact, I've seen some ice fishermen out on some of them. Uh, I would never do it. I'm... <laughs> You know, everybody's got, I guess, a phobia or two. Uh, my, I don't have many, um, maybe one or two. I, I'm not going out on that. Well, here, I'll tell you a story. <clears throat> I just have this fear of falling through the ice and drowning, you know, because of, of, of what happens. You know, it's, so, you know, people do survive, but man, if you don't get help, you're done. It's over. When I moved here to New Hampshire 13 years ago, we had some really cold winters. And we had one particular winter early on, probably might have been the second winter. 
I I was kind of semi-retired, and I one afternoon I did some research. I went to a really fantastic website put out by the state of Minnesota because they have a lot of lakes up in Minnesota. And I mean, it gets cold in Minnesota. They're experts on ice. And they had a really neat website that described how you can tell how thick the ice is, what's the best ice, what's the worst ice. Well, it just so happened this particular year in, on my lake, very rare that this happens. It has not happened since then, is that we we had, it got really cold, it was getting cold. Um, I live on a big lake and what happens, it's called fetch. So it's a very long lake and it's actually oriented perfectly for the wind, it's north south. And we have a lot of north wind in the winter time. So the, you know, the waters, there's always waves, you know? So when it's the water's choppy and wavy, it's really hard to freeze. That's why the smaller ponds and the smaller lakes freeze much sooner because they're protected. At nighttime, the water is like glass and boom, it freezes. Well, one night the wind stopped and the ice formed and it was as smooth as a sheet of glass. And then it got really cold and it didn't snow. And that's the, that's the magic. And the ice just got thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. It eventually, I, I did a video. You can go onto my YouTube channel and find it. Um, I forget. I don't know. Ice. I don't know. Just look, just, just type Lake Winnesquam, Tim Carter into the YouTube search engine. You should be able to find it. If you do do it now, come back and please put the link into the chat. I'd appreciate it for everyone else. But I, I showed drilling down through it. Anyway, what, they said on this website, just so you know, I know we're getting way off on a tangent here, is if you can tell how thick the ice is, because the ice on these bigger lakes, you look at cracks in it, and you can see the cracks. And it's it's not like the ice is going to fall apart in those cracks. It's not going to, it's not. It just, it crack. Well, I could tell that the ice was like a foot or 16 inches thick. And they said anything over four inches is totally safe to walk on. I mean, totally safe. At six inches, you could drive a car on it. <laughs> I'm not driving my car on the ice, all right? So I know there's that TV show, Ice Road Truckers. I get it. Uh, I'm not doing it. Anyway, oh, by the way, if you like what you're hearing, click that like button, okay? So I decide, I get the courage. I, You know, I, I, I thought, you know what? I'm going to walk on the ice. So I walk out onto the ice and I start finding the cracks. And I just start walking along these cracks and I walk way out to the middle of the lake. And I, anybody who was watching me must have thought I was nuts because they pro probably were wondering, well, why aren't you just walking in a straight line? And uh, I was afraid to because they said on this website that the thickness of the ice can vary. I mean, can vary wildly because there can be springs under the lake that are welling up and eroding the ice. So I just walked on the cracks. So anyway, uh, <laughs> Okay, Sean, rub it in, man. 76 in Florida. Give me a break. Uh, that would be nice today. It'd be nice. I know some people who would like to be down there. I have some friends of mine who actually are flying today uh, to Aruba for three or four months. Can you believe that? I just, I would go, but Kathy, my wife, nope, she, we're not going. <laughs> you know, so, uh, you know, I can't really abandon her. She, she encourages me to travel on my own. She doesn't like to travel. I do. Um, but in the wintertime, I cannot abandon her here. There's, there's, uh, you have to get rid of the snow here around the house. So I'm, I'm stuck here in New Hampshire in the wintertime. Okay. Um, I'll answer your question, Josh, and then I'm going to go talk a little bit about modulating boilers. So anyway, um, remember, if you... If you if you got a minute and you can find that video of me on the ice, you know, drilling the ice on Lake Winnesquam, just go into the YouTube search engine, open up a different tab, type in um, Tim Carter Lake Winnesquam, W-I-N-N-I-S-Q-U-A-M, and it should pop right up. You know, watch the video first. Make sure you see it's me on clear ice. There's probably three or four or five videos of me on the ice. But most of the ones, I'm really close to shore. So I knew if I fell through, I, I would not go in over my head. Anyway, uh, Josh wants to know, how close an insulate chimney before covering to electric fireplace? Um, well, Josh, I'm a little confused. I know you've, you've tried to abbreviate what it is. 
you probably have to read the instructions. You have to read, the first thing to always do is read the electric fireplace installations and they will typically have uh, clearance guidelines where they'll say, don't put anything combustible within so many inches of the side or the back or the top or the bottom or whatever. So that's the first place to start. And uh, I think after you do that, you're going to be okay. It's going to tell you exactly what you need to know. But um, yeah, just read those instructions and see what they say. Otherwise, I can't give you, I'm not going to say five inches or six or whatever, because it could be wrong. You have to just read the installation instructions. Modulating boilers. <clears throat> Let's talk about them. I have a link to them way at the top of the chat. That was the first link I put in today. I have a modulating boiler in my own home. That's how I stay warm. I put one in my daughter's new home. Um, let's see, we installed that maybe two years ago. Um, yeah, I think it was two years ago. Gosh, it's hard to... I think it was in February of uh, 2020 we put it in. Yeah, that would have been right. February of 2020. Anyway, um, here's what's cool about modulating boilers. First of all, most of them, if, if you've ever seen an old boiler, you know, these the old boilers are big. I mean, they are how, how can I explain? They're about this, they're 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 big. I mean, they're they're boxy, they sit on the floor. You typically put them up on concrete blocks. You know, you don't want to put the boiler right on the floor in case of a flood. And they they may be two 30 inches wide, three feet deep, three feet high. I mean, pre pretty big boxes. Um, and w with the old boilers, what would happen is they work a lot like, um, I don't know, like a bottle rocket is about the best way I think to describe it, if you've ever played with fireworks. So if you light a bottle rocket, the bottle rocket is either off, you know, where you haven't lit in the fuse yet, or once you light the fuse and, and it ignites, it's full on. I mean, it just, it's full on. It just goes. So there's no middle ground. Um, but think about how the burner on top of your gas range might work. So, and, and the same would be true on an electric stove. But let's talk about if you have a gas stove. So think about it. If you have a gas stove like we have here, you've got a control knob and you can, you can turn the fire on to high. And I mean, the flame is as big as it gets, you know, big, big, big flame. But if you crank it back down to where it says simmer, you know, you've got a very tiny flame. I mean, really small. All right. So that's a good thing because then, you know, if you had it, if you wanted to simmer something and you only had on, full or off, you would burn it up in a, in a few minutes. That's how a modulating boiler works. It, you can modulate the, fr the flame. Okay. That's a good thing. Saving you money because keep this in mind, even though all these modern boilers and gas burning appliances are efficient. Um, yeah, I did look nervous. <laughs> how you doing, Italian? How, thank you for doing that. Hey, Steve, how you doing? <laughs> uh, anyway, um, remember, even with a high efficiency appliance, there is some waste. In other words, I think my boiler is either 96 or 97% efficient, which is great. That means that all of that means 96 or 97 percent of the energy that's in the gas that I'm burning, the propane, it stays inside the house. The old boilers, like the old boiler that I replaced, was probably only 60 percent efficient. So 40 percent of the heat went outside. That's crazy. That's nuts. So even though they're high efficiency, you can see that it's to your advantage that if I only have one zone, like my house has seven heating zones, which is also very nice, by the way. That's a whole nother subject on another day. All right. And I'm happy to talk about that. That's why I love radiant heating. So let's just say that the master bedroom is the only place calling for heat. And so the boiler goes, oh, just the master bedroom? Well, we, we only need to have this much flame. I mean, we'll, everything's going to be fine. But if five zones, like, for example, on a few days, if the weather forecast holds, maybe six days from now, I think, it's going to get below zero here. Um, we'll have the, all the zones calling for heat probably at the same time. 
Well, then the boiler is working. I mean, then then the boiler hit flame has to get big to be able to provide enough heat out to all the different zones. So that's why you want a modulating boiler, because the smaller you can keep the flame, the less waste there is going outside. It's really that simple. So if you have any questions about modulating boilers, I'm happy to answer them. I'll answer any other question that you've got. Uh, as you well know, let's try to stay away from the polarizing topics. <laughs> We don't move the ball down the field if, if we do that, you know. <laughs> oh, all right. Um, how you doing, Way? Uh, oh, so Steve, can you take care of that? There's one of those bad people. And at some point, I want you to explain to me what those stupid. Um, it looks like they want you to type that link that 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 URL and that really odd URL. So. Can you can you uh, get rid of that and and block that person you know if you can? Yes, thank you, thank you, Steve. You know, and block that guy. Just get rid of those people. Um, the answer. So Steve wants to know: Are we signed up to Agenda Thirty Fifty? Yeah, we are. Uh, actually, who did it? That, that slime bag. <laughs> the uh, the first President Bush back thirty something years ago. The, the guy who was President Reagan's vice president, uh, he signed us on to Agenda 21. I, I did a big, I was big into that, uh, against it here in New Hampshire. Um, go to YouTube. You can see me in a nice suit and tie if you want. Uh, go to YouTube and type Tim Carter Agenda 21 and watch the videos there of, of me. I debated one of the top people in New Hampshire about it and just, I carved the guy to pieces. Um, anyway. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Okay, that's okay if you can't block them. Uh, that's good. Do whatever you can. Just do whatever you can to hurt them. That's all. That's all I ask. You know, it's just like you you predicted this was going to happen, and you're right. Um, so, um, <laughs> Abdul, Grant, I love you, Grandpa. That's what my granddaughter says, okay? <laughs> that's reserved only for my granddaughter. <laughs> uh, anyway, okay. Let's get back on topic. I think you can hide from channel. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. So anyway, yeah, you guys figure out what to do with those bad people. Um, we got some bad people here. All right. So anyway, um, any questions you have about your home, about heating? Uh, I know that Sean is not going to talk about heating. He's down in Florida. God bless you, Sean. <laughs> oh, yeah. But you know what? I can't wait to, I'm doing these live streams in July and August. I want you to be coming to me those days and tell me how many times you've changed your clothes through the day. <laughs> so hot and humid down there. Anyway, um, any questions that you have about anything, happy to answer them. Uh, happy to answer them. So uh, <laughs> what else did I want to talk to you about? I... Um, uh, I don't know who Abdul is, uh, but anyway, <laughs> I don't know how you could love me. You don't, you don't even know me. I could be an axe murderer for all you know. <laughs> Missing. Happy Tuesday. We had a contractor leave to look at our fireplace. Okay. We have had a few companies choose from just one local. Um, okay. So, um, well, if you have any questions uh, about it, let me know. I understand that on my website, I have a lot of really good past columns about traditional masonry fireplaces. So if you have a problem with your masonry fireplace they're missing, um, you may want to, you, you you probably, I see what you're going to, you're meeting with them on Friday. You should probably between now and Friday, go to askthebuilder.com and just type fireplace into the search engine and read everything that comes back in the search results. Just read it all. And, uh, you know, so that you can at least have some context about what they're talking about to see if the, what they're talking about is true or not. Um, anyway. <clears throat> All right. So Steve says, when we go carbon neutral, we have to spend 20 grand on new boilers. Yeah, exactly. So that is, um, um, hey, Steve, I, I'm not feeling real comfortable about Abdullah. I don't know how you are. You're a pro at this. So you have liberty to do whatever you want with him or her or it or whatever. 
So I hear something that's really kind of interesting. Uh, I'll just kind of go off topic because it's it's not really off topic. Some people may think it's political. It, it's really not. I saw in the news. Um, uh, <clears throat> I saw in the news maybe three or four days ago. And Steve, you may know you may know more about this than I do because you're much closer. But I think the story was Germany was going to shut down three of their last six nuclear um, electricity plants, you know, electricity generators, which I thought was really interesting. I just thought, wow, you know, shutting down these nuclear power plants. So ha- this is a rhetorical question. I didn't, I don't think it was in the column and I didn't, I didn't, I think it was over the weekend and I wasn't really interested in reading the story. I just saw the headline, but I just, the first thought was, um, here's this big push in the European Union, you know, to be green, go green, go green, go green, you know, boo, boo to <laughs> burning fossil fuels. Um, so, you know, get electric cars. So so th- this is a rhetorical question. What in the world, how's Germany going to make up for that electricity? I mean, are they going to build new coal p- fired plants or new plants that are burning natural gas? I mean, that's a rhetorical question, but it's just some of this stuff, when you really start to peel back the layers, it's like, wait a minute, this this is not making sense. All right, let's get uh, uh, caught up here. Um, Missing says, it is a fireplace box in the wall. They said masons are hard to schedule right now. I don't doubt that. Um, I don't doubt that. Um, um, Thank you, Steve, for hiding that. I, I, I just felt, you know, you, I say it, I'm going to say it a bunch of times. You warned me that that was going to happen, that, that, that we would attract some questionable people. Let's just say that. Um, so anyway, missing, I don't quite understand what's going on. Um, but, um, anyway, just go to my website, read all you can with respect. If you're going to get a new insert or some new prefabricated fireplace, just like I always written a hundred times, get the written installation instructions, you know, make your selection, what you're going to go with. Then you get the instructions as if you're going to install it. And then you read the instructions so that you understand how it's supposed to be installed so that you can double check along the way that it's being installed correctly. That's what you have to do with everything right now, unfortunately. Uh, oh, okay, great. Thank you, Way Into. That's really interesting about hiding them. Thank you. Uh, I learned something too. Uh, okay, wait, we have a lot of windmills here in Germany. Yeah. And you know what? This I'll tell you something that's interesting about those windmills. So, it would be really interesting for you to check into. It's not going to be easy. In fact, that would really be a neat assignment for you. Check in to see who owns them. Who owns the windmills in Germany? I would be willing to bet you $20 today, 20 US dollars, that most of them are not owned by German people or German companies, that they are owned by foreigners. Because that's the way it is here in New Hampshire. I've got some of those wretched site ruining windmills only, I don't know, 15 miles from my house. And they're owned by a Spanish company. And what I think is going on is I think the, the people that are at the top of the pyramid in each country are dealing with one another. So the Spaniards have windmills here. And I'm making this up. The Argentine, um, uh, you know, royalty or the, you know, the, um, the the well-to-do people have windmills in Spain and the Italians have windmills in Egypt. I don't know. It, it, it just check in to see who owns those windmills in Germany. And I think uh, it'll, you'll, it'll open up your eyes. Uh, yeah. All right. So no coal-fired plants in the UK. Um, it's um anyway, all right. LOL, this is an okay. We checked uh the label of the corona test being used here in Germany on the package, but guess is but guess who owned the German company? Bingo. Exactly, right, exactly. I'll tell you something that's really interesting here here in America right now. 
uh, and I'll just get a little off topic, but um, but it's it, once again, this is not political. It's just a fact. It's a fact. All right. So I'm my I'm the head usher at our church on Sunday at the 1030 mass. And my wife is also a head usher. And it's a long story, but we provide the stupid paper masks at the door if people want to wear them. And there's a sign that says they're recommended. So I don't wear one because it's a recommendation. And I don't need to wear a mask because I had COVID. So I have the best immunity. Not only do I have the best immunity that you can get, you can't get any better than what I've got. Um, I can't infect anybody else, right? I, I, you know, it, that's what herd immunity is all about, okay? So if you if you read the small print on the box of these paper masks, most of them, I have not found a box yet that doesn't say this, right? I have not found a box that doesn't say this. It says in small print, not for medical use. <laughs> and supposedly we're handing them out to people for the most deadly disease ever to hit the world. <laughs> I mean, that's how they're portraying it. All right. This is why I say you got to start using your flipping head. <laughs> not only in home improvement, but in everything you do. All right. Uh, missing says, I'm not a fan of nuclear. A cousin says not worked on building the Illinois plant. Yeah, I'm to use a few odds. Yeah, I, I, we had a problem with the quality of construction of one near Cincinnati, Ohio, just up river on the Ohio River. In fact, they never let it go operational because there were so many flaws and bad construction. Uh, it can be an issue. Um, once they figure out, let's see, right now the, the nuclear plants use fusion and once they figure out fission, which I believe is what the sun is, the sun is fission. So that is uh, hydrogen um, splitting off. Um, that's safer, much safer. Whereas fusion is the radioactivity stuff, you know, the, um, you know, which not, not, not a good thing, you know, like Chernobyl, bad, bad, bad stuff. All right. So anyway, um, Exactly. That's exactly right. Um, yes, exactly right, Steve, about the Spanish flu. So anyway, um, bad, 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 bad stuff about going on about all that. But um, um, anyway, wind power. Uh, <clears throat> I, you know, I'm a big fan. When I, I'm a big fan of solar. And what I think, what I think is best, in my opinion, and because I just hate the windmills. I hate everything about the windmills. Is I like the photo, the PV, the PV panels. You know the black panels. Uh, I like them because you can put them down low to the ground. You can hide them. You can have trees around them, but except on the south edge, uh, you can have these entire fields covered with them, and you don't even know they're there. And they don't block the view. They don't kill birds. You know, I, I mean, I just hate everything about those big windmills. I, I just, I don't like them. But that's just me. All right, I'm, I'm just one person. Um, all right. So missing says I was a dispatcher within 10 miles of the Zion plant in the early nineties. Yeah, exactly. Right. No, they, they have, I mean, Chernobyl, I, 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 uh, not only did I read the book about Chernobyl, uh, but that, that movie that was on maybe three or four years ago, I forget how many weeks it was on that TV show about it. It was really pretty good. I mean, it was, um, it was, Boy, that was, uh, I mean, wh what it was, the problem was that the Russians, at least for that particular reactor, um, they they didn't they didn't build a containment building around the reactor. So when the reactor went critical <laughs> and exploded, I mean, there wasn't anything to hold the explosion back. That was, so whereas in America, we have containment, and I think in Europe and whatever, uh, the, the other countries, they build this giant flipping concrete thing, four or five, six feet thick, um, that if the reactor explodes, the, the concrete thing contains it. At least that's what they hope for, all right? But Chernobyl, <laughs> it, it was just like a big M80 going off, all right, in a, in a, in a, in a coffee can, all right? So... Uh, Ukraine. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You're true. Ukraine, not Russia. You're right. You're right. You, see, that's what's happened. Steve, I, look, I'm guilty, man. <laughs> us flipping up, not all of us, 
some of us, I'm one of the some. <laughs> we're so snobbish. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, we just think we're king of the hill, you know, so we don't need to know anything about anybody else. I mean, I'm just, I'm telling you how it is for a lot of Americans. We, you know, at your, your situation is you're, you're so close to them. I mean, what happens with America from a mindset, not all of us, some of us, is that here we are, we got oceans on either side of us. Canada's up to our north. Canadians, great people, but you know what? There's there's not that many of them. And they're quiet. They they don't bother us. They're like that neighbor. They're like that Canadians are like that neighbor you have that that just minds their own business, doesn't bother you, says hello to you, and that's about it. All right. Good for them. All right. So whereas America, I hope you're laughing at this. I mean, it's like we're so blase because it's like we're so far away from everything. I mean, you know, I know the internet has has made us closer, and you can get instant news, but that our our world news is so filtered. Um, I just don't trust it. I I have no clue what's going on anywhere. That the mainstream media just they absolutely are not telling the truth about what's going on everywhere. So oh well, uh, I have to depend on things like this. So anyway. Um, uh, so that's that. So boy, got really, really off topic. Uh, any, any, <laughs> good. I hope you are. Uh, I hope you are laughing. I don't want to offend you, you know, and if I ever offend you, I'm sorry. I don't do it on purpose. You know, I'm just, that. I'm not that type of guy. You probably know that. Uh, Missing says, my husband always said our education is so lacking. He's born in Wisconsin, but usually picks the BBC for news. Um, boy, I'm sure Steve will jump in on that. I think the BBC is probably, they're so biased. I can't, I just, I can't believe that. Uh, well, I mean, here's the thing, uh, you know, because I'm still a member of the working media. All right. Uh, I'm still, I, I write a syndicated newspaper column. What if I told you, I don't trust anything I read. All right. It's like, it's like, see the, 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 the intention just so you know, at least here in America, the intention when the founding fathers gave us the freedom of the press, what if you do some research on this, you'll discover that the actual, um, oh, what I want to say, the fancy term, it's called the fourth estate. So the fourth estate, look that up. But what you look up may not be true. That's the trouble online. The whole purpose was for the, the press, you know, at the time, the newspapers, to be able to tell that whatever, say whatever they want and to hold the feet to the fire of the people in power. That was what, why that was done. Because King George didn't let people, I mean, Steve will tell you, King George wasn't letting people tell the truth. All right. Like, you're not, you're not, we're not, you know, it's, it's like what's happening now on Twitter and Facebook and here on YouTube. I mean, they just, they just censor you. <laughs> they don't want the truth out there. All right. So anyway, but, and, and that's what's happened, unfortunately, here in America. And I think across the world is that the fourth estate is just faded away. I mean, there's smaller outlets that are trying to do it, that are trying to tell the truth and, 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 and whatever, but not, not the big boys. Uh -uh. A great example of it just happened here in my home. On New Year's Day, on our television, we've got cable television here, Atlantic Broadband, and Atlantic Broadband lies. The company lies, saying we're no longer carrying Newsmax. And they, they put the blame on Newsmax, and it was a big lie. You can go on to Newsmaxtoday.com, go to Newsmax.com and read the truth. Read, you know, just, you can't, you can't believe anything. Simple as that. All right, let me get caught up. Um Good. I can tell you do have a good sense of humor, Steve. Uh, Six Sky News used to be good, too, but they went off the deep end. Yep, that's right. That's exactly. Uh, <laughs> that's what the name of the BBC is. I love it. Uh, you must have written something that was bad. You took off yourself. Uh, all right. King George is mental. Yeah. Uh, yes, exactly. H. Lee, you're exactly right. Um, yeah, it's um anyway, the news just 
It's horrible. I mean, it's just horrible. All right. <laughs> just, and, you know, just so you know. I, so I'm going to get way off topic here now. This is I'm going to kind of editorialize a little bit. And um, I think this once again, remember, everything I'm saying is opinion. Um, this is just opinion. And I don't really have any data to back it up. It's just a feeling that I have. I think this has all been a big plan. I mean, like a multi-generational plan um, by, I'm just going to say, I'll say the deep state, you know, people like Bill Gates, uh, Dr. Fraudchi, um, uh, all kinds of other people, you know, like even the Bushes, uh, all the all the upper people, you know, the people in power. Uh, and anyway, if you go back in time, here's, this is why history is such a really good, it's like a barometer, you know, so think about a barometer. So if you have a really good barometer, an accurate one, I mean, you can look at the barometer, you can log it, and you can start to predict what's going to happen. Like, if you see the the barometer going down, you're going to, and, and you have enough experience, you go, shit, we're going to have a storm, man. It's going to, it's going to rain or it's going to snow or whatever. But if the barometer is going up, you're going, oh, blue sky, great weather coming, high pressure system. All right. So history, I feel, is a really great barometer as long as you're reading an accurate version. So let's go back in time a uh, 100 years here in America. It could be Europe as well. And at least here in America, we still had God in the schools, even in public schools. All right. Not that they necessarily taught religion, but God was talked about. And the whole purpose of God and the whole purpose of teaching religion, in fact, remember, America was founded uh, on Judeo-Christian principles by the founding fathers. Right in, right, if you ever look at it, go, go, go look at a, at a wide-angle view of the State of the Union address given by the president each year. And you'll see above him carved in giant letters, probably six feet high, in the joint chambers of Congress, it says, what it says on our money. It says, in God we trust. All right. So as soon as you start taking God out of the schools and you stop teaching about God, then the morality of the country starts to go down. I should probably use this hand. I don't know. The morality starts going downhill. All right. So that's when the morality goes downhill. I mean, just look at the Bible. If, you're, if you believe in the Bible, if you believe that any of that's true, look at what had, happened to Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, where morality just went into the toilet, and at some point, it was game over, all right? So, so if you were trying to take over the world or take over or control, you, you want morality to go down the toilet. So that's what's happened, in my opinion, with mainstream media, is that it started many, many years ago by, by programming young children who are now adults in these big businesses that morality doesn't matter. All right. That you know what that and and that's you can actually see it on a personal level. Um, you know these things. So how many tens of millions of selfie? You know when you hold the phone. I know you can't see it. Hold the phone out and smile. You know and take a selfie shot. How many millions of those are out on the internet or on TikTok or on Instagram? If you're as old as I am. If they would have seen you, if they would have seen me do that in grade school, I would have gone to detention. You want a picture taken of yourself? You get somebody else to take it. So the, it's this, the, it's all this me, 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 me stuff. All right. So enough, I'm, enough of that. I've, I've editorialized. I think you get my point. I'm just saying that um, the morality is going down the toilet because God's been taken out of schools. And, um, you know, you need to teach people to be selfless. Whereas right now, people are being taught to be selfish. I know it sounds crazy, but that's what the truth is. And that's the root problem of, of every evil in the world. Just, you know, every single thing that's bad, you can trace the root cause back to selfishness. For example, if somebody murders somebody else, they're being selfish because they're, take, they're just thinking of themselves and they're, they don't care about the other person. That's why they're killing them. All right. So that's just an example. All right. Let me get caught up on the comments here. 
Uh, thank you, Steve, for taking care of these bad people. Um, yeah, the Alchi Fauci. <laughs> I can still remember us being a guest about the ISIS tearing down. Yeah, exactly. 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 Well, that tearing down statues, I mean, go, it's time for a lot of people. If you've not done it in a while, I haven't done it since high school. Go back and reread A Brave New World, assuming you can find a copy. Go back and read Animal Farm. All this stuff is in that book. They, they did all this. Everything you're seeing happening is in those two books. Um, globalist, there you go. Exactly. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. That's exactly right, Steve. Exactly right. Globalists are in the, yep. And they're trying, they're trying to take everybody out with the uh the experimental biological agent. That's what I call it. I'm not calling it that other word, I'm not doing it, because it's not one of those things. It's not a V word. All right. Uh the way war into poverty. Um yes, exactly. Yes, yes, exactly. Exactly, exactly right. You're exactly right, way into adventures. Uh yes. And you're exactly right, missing. History is so important. Yes, exactly. Crazy, craziness. We got craziness going on. And um I'm here. You didn't necessarily hear it here first. But I'm I'm here to tell you. So so I I used to be the leader of the Lakes Region Tea Party back here in New Hampshire, in central New Hampshire, it, it, about 10 years ago. And I would frequently say, you know, people would, people who came to the meeting were nice people, but they would say, why isn't, why, why don't other people see this? Why don't other people see what's going on? Blah, 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 blah. And, and it, it's, it's, think about stuff around your own home. This is really a great way to bring home improvement back into this talk. You may have a, some little nagging problems at your home. Um, I, I don't know. It could be a, it could be a sticking door, you, you know, um, you know, like a door that doesn't maybe latch just right. And, you know, it, it works and it doesn't work. It's no big deal. But then all of a sudden one day you think it's latched. It's not. Um, a storm comes, blows it open and all kinds of rain comes in, ruins the floor leaks downstairs, ruins the basement seal, whatever. It becomes now a problem. Now, now you've felt enough pain that you're going to get the door fixed so it doesn't do that again. So that's, 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 what ha that's what's in play here. That's why the people who are in power try to do things slowly. You know, what's the old saying? Like if you drop a frog into a pot of boiling water, it'll, you'll kill it right away. But if you if you put a frog in a in a cool water and you just very slowly raise the temperature, it can it can tolerate pretty hot water and still survive. All right, so you know, drip, 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 drip. So the reason you don't see stuff happening is because people aren't feeling enough pain. And when people finally feel enough pain, that's when they just think about it in your own life. It could be an argument you have with your wife or your husband. You know, when you finally blow your top, it's like that's it. That was the final straw. And that's what you're going to see happen here. You're going to start seeing that happening. Uh, I mean, look, I saw this in the news the other day. A couple of quick news stories. Uh, once again, I don't know if it's true, but some guy over in Australia was so pissed off about what's going on. He must have really been upset. He set himself on fire. You got to, you have to have a lot of courage to do that. Let me tell you. All right. So um, anyway. Bad stuff. All right. Uh, all right. Let's get caught up. Um, all right. Uh, <laughs> I've never photographed uh, myself or my food. All right. So I do <clears throat> I do the food stuff. <clears throat> I'm a Google. Get This is kind of funny. This is another offshoot, another tangent. So I've become like one of these Google gods. And I... Whenever I travel, I take photographs of places and I, um, I'll take photographs of food. Like if I'm at a restaurant and the restaurant, I, I used to manage a restaurant. So I know how hard it is and I know how hard it is for most of those businesses to be profitable. So if I go to a good restaurant and they've got good food, so I reward them because I take some photos of the food. What I do is I always take photos of the food. 
because I don't know yet if it's good because I haven't eaten it yet. But if it's good, then I load those photos to Google Maps, right? So I've been doing this for about eight years. I, I get these announcements in the email all the time about how many times my photos have been seen. I, all of my photos have been seen like 75 million or 100 million times. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> I have this one photo that I took of my buddy's head. Uh, it just kind of caught the top of his head. I was next to him in a booth. Of a, we were eating lunch at a local pizza parlor. And I took this photo around this time of year and I had some Christmas lights up. It's called, it's Tilton House. You can actually go see it. Tilton House of Pizza. Tilton House of Pizza. Or, or Tilton, no, no, it's called uh, 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 Pizza pizza something. Uh, oh, oh, no, it's called Upper Crust. Upper Crust in Tilton, New Hampshire. Anyway, this photo has been watched about two and a half million times. Two and a half million times. It's crazy. All right, so. So I do take pictures of food. All right. Um, uh, all right. So exactly. Well, I, there's a lot of photos of, of me. In, in my granddaughter is really lucky and my kids because I've got hundreds of videos on YouTube. They'll, they'll not only be able to see me, they'll be able to hear me. All right. So that's one of the benefits of doing these live streams. At some point, my I guess my ancestors are going to be able to say there's that crazy, crazy grandpa Tim. <laughs> Uh, oh, good. Congratulations on your first grandchild. Yeah, I, my first grandchild is going to be three years old next month. Wonderful age that three years old. Man, oh man, oh man. Uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Way to into. Yeah, it's really kind of cool. Um, and, and I, I like I said, I, I write stuff that's truthful because I want, you know, I've been a small business my whole life. So I'm attracted to small businesses big time. I, I love Love, love going to small businesses. And if I get great service, whatever, man, I, I am taking photos there like crazy, doing everything in the world to help these businesses. And um, uh, it's the least you can do. Uh, so there you go, Josh. Uh, oh, very cool for you. Good. Congratulations. Top 10%. Good for you. Uh, yeah, that's true, OB, about the pocketbook money. Yeah, it's crazy how many times my photos have been seen. I, I um, it's just insane. I mean, it's just crazy. Uh, especially there was this one. Um, I went. I was in Cincinnati maybe, I don't know, six years ago, five years ago, and I went to dinner with a good friend of mine. He's an orthopedic surgeon, really, really great guy. And he treated me, and we went. Out, he he likes small businesses too, and. He likes these really eclectic restaurants that you would typically just drive right by. And we went to this Italian restaurant right off of Western Northern Boulevard. I know that means nothing to you. It's on the west side of Cincinnati. And I started taking a few photos. And this place just had regular, I mean, not fancy tables or chairs. Nothing about this place was fancy. And um, one, like one of my photos, same thing. I think it was, it's been viewed like 4 million times. It's like crazy. Like that. And then, oh, there's a really great photo. Go look at this photo. Go, go type this into Google, um, into Google Maps. Um, go to Google Maps and type Incline House, Cincinnati. So Google Maps, Incline. So I N C L I N E house. And then Cincinnati. It's a restaurant. And you're going to see, and look at the photos. You're going to see this photo I shot. Back three months ago, my same buddy took me to dinner there. Uh, he's a grade school buddy. We were just great friends in grade school. And I took this, I had just gotten a brand, my brand new phone. The, um, this is the Pixel 5a. You know, they were trying to unload them because the six Pixel 6 was coming out. Anyway, the camera on this thing, amazing. I, and it's got this special uh, night, uh, night setting. And anyway... Um, took this beautiful shot of the view uh, looking off the terrace. Um, oh, I want to see what's going on here. I, uh, UPS guy's bringing a bunch of stuff here. And, <laughs> and I heard this noise outside and it all fell off his cart. <laughs> oh, well, no big deal. He's a new guy. He doesn't realize he can drive down here. He could have driven the truck down here. Anyway, go look at that photo. Um, so, uh, and then... Um, Oh, there we go. There's that bad guy. You know what to do, Steve. Get rid of that guy. Deep six that guy, please. So look at that nighttime photo I took from the terrace. 
strike. It was an amazing photo. Um, I mean, it wasn't that I was a great photographer. It was the camera doing all the work. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Uh, uh, exactly. Uh, why don't you, Missing, if you could do me a favor, if you still have it on your screen, you know how if you have it up there, you there's a button where you can share it. It'll create the link. So if you could grab that link and paste it in the chat, that would be great. Uh, thank you, Steve, for getting rid of that guy. So um, I think I already know the answer to this. Um, I know we really want to stay away from the as much as we can from the polarizing topics. Um, <laughs> but do you like this more relaxed go anywhere live stream or like, and I, I'm exaggerating here, like stay on topic, you know, like, like, let's just talk modulating boilers. I, I, you know, but I just think sometimes I go way too far off track. I mean, so I should probably create a poll. Um, let me, I, I'll try to do this. Let's see how this guy, here I go. Uh, yeah, I'm creating a poll. Stay away. Maybe I could spell right. Okay. Um, I'll hit, I'll add an option. Here we go. All right, here we go. Let's see how this works. All right, so I've never done this before. Um, I don't know where it went to. Oh, there it is. That's interesting. Look at that. Oh, so that's cool. So I, I've never done this. It's kind of fun. Maybe we should start doing this more often um, where I can um, um, end the poll. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, great. Okay, Steve. I, I knew that's what you would say. I knew that. And I'm happy to do it. It's just that, uh, just so you know, one of the viewers back in the first week uh, when we were doing the live streams, when I started back in November or whenever, um, he emailed me privately. He lives here in America and he may be watching today. And I respect, I respect everybody's opinion. And he, he was trying to say, you know, stay, you know, stay away from all the politics, stay away from the illness, um, you know, because it's just too polarizing. And, and he's right. He's right. But I also still feel, uh, in other words, I don't, if you feel differently than I do politically, I get it. You're, you're, I'm not going to change your mind. You're not going to change mine. If you, if you think that those masks work, you really feel that way. Cause I know they don't. I, cause I, I know how big the coronavirus is. It's only one micron wide. Did you know this about the coronavirus? Did you know that you can fit 900 of those things, of the little virus things that are supposedly floating around, that have got the little things on them, the little cauliflowers? That's what they look like to me, a piece of cauliflower, a cauliflower stock. You can fit 900 of them side by side on the width of one of your hairs. <laughs> All right. That's how, so your uh, width of your human hair is about 900 microns. All right. So... <laughs> And you think, and have you ever held up? Seriously, I, I don't want to do it here and gross you out. But, you know, you could do this. You could you could hold up your shirt or a T-shirt like this. Hold it to your T-shirt like a T-shirt. Like that's a thin fabric that people are putting over their face. Hold that up to a light. Look at the cross hatching of the weaving, you know, the, of the threads. I mean, you have holes that you can see light through. You could probably fit three or 400 Corona things through that hole at the same time. And people think these masks work right. Use your flipping head. That's what that's what that's what this live stream is all about. Is get people to start flipping thinking. Stop believing everybody else. Stop it. Stop it. 80% <laughs> say yes. Okay. Got it. That's what we're gonna do. Uh uh, so anyway, um get caught up uh <laughs> yeah we need to protect free speech we are here in america it's not going to go away all, all this stuff you see on the news is all bluster especially when they talk about unfortunately over there in the uk steve i don't know why you guys did it or how it happened uh how you gave away your right your guns i don't get it man i don't get it 
it's not happening here. The poor people in Australia, what the heck happened to them? Are they? <laughs> We're not giving up our guns. It's not going to happen. Don't worry about it. Not, not going to happen. Um, uh, it says, let's see. Um, I am, <laughs> wait a minute. Are you on Tinder? Wait, isn't Tinder that dating website? I don't know. Uh, for, yeah. uh, all right. No. <laughs> on the Google Maps, you can just swipe through the, oh, interesting. You can't grab a, uh, you can't grab a, um, what, uh, you can't grab a, a thing to share. Okay. I, um, I can, actually, I'll do it here. S watch. Just, uh, you know, remember, ladies, those watching, I'm a man. <laughs> I have a hard time multitasking, really hard time. I'm going to get, I'm going to share the link to the photo here. I've got it. I've got my Google photos up right now. I'm looking through them, trying to get down October. Come on, right here. Um, I'll have that photo in just a second. Um, it, it it was a, when I went, when the, when the photo showed up on the camera, I knew right away. I thought, oh my gosh, I'm almost there. I just can't. Is it before or after here where I'm at? Um, oh, it's after. Anyway, um, oh yeah, here it is right here. Got it. I got it. I'll have the link for you in just a second. Here we go. So, I mean, you'll see this guy, this poor guy's head. He's got a bald spot, a little smaller than mine. <laughs> so he's going to be famous. <laughs> he has no idea that I took his photo, the back of his head. Uh, you know, so anyway, here we go. Um, here, here's the photo. So, um, anyway, um, I'll, uh, I'll leave the poll open. It, I already know what to do. I'll keep doing what I'm doing. Um, wow. For supporting Brexit. Really? Wow. That's well, that's happening here in America right now, Steve. Um, in, I mean, if I, I don't live in a big city, but if you were in a big city, you have to really be careful. Well, especially out on the West Coast, like you, you just would not even want to go walk around uh, San Francisco or Portland, Oregon. And and it, you, you would not want to be uh, wearing any Trump gear. I'll tell you that right now. You're going to get you're going to get attacked. You're going to get beat up. Um, it's not a good thing. Uh, so anyway, um. Uh, yeah, no problem. I, I got, I just shared the photo. Um, uh, really, I, like I said, I just took the picture, you know, I, it's not, it was hard. It was impossible to mess it up. It's just that the camera made it so vibrant, you know, and got all those colors in it because it was using that night that, you know, the night setting. So, and, uh, anyway, um, so yeah, lots and lots and lots of photos out there. Um, yeah, exactly. It's like we're yeah, uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much. Way into it's just I, I like taking photos. I've got so many photos. Uh, I've got thousands and thousands of photos. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's it's uh, politics here in America has gotten really polarizing. It just I'm, I'm the same way. I don't talk to anybody about it. But the reason understand that the reason, and it's really not a good idea. Remember, our mom and our mom and dad told us, don't talk politics or religion with anybody. All right. All right. And the, the reason why is if you don't already know this, so those so those are, are really core values. It, it like if you like if you look at your brain, let's just say our brains are this wide. Like as you get closer and closer to the center, the center of the things in your brain, I'm just that's a that's a metaphor, by the way. I mean, or, or it's, it's just a I'm just making a comparison. I'm not saying it's in the center of your brain, but I'm just saying the closer you get to the center, those things are really tough to change. I mean, that's really that's like ROM, that's like programming on a ROM chip, you know, inside a computer. I mean, it's like you're not changing it. Not, but you get out to the edges, you know, like you might go. Hmm, I think it's going to rain today. And someone says, well, I don't think it's going to rain today. And here's why. And you go, oh, okay. I, maybe you're right. It's not going to rain today. But <laughs> you get closer to your core values. You're not, you're not changing them. So that's why <clears throat> it doesn't do any good. Uh, I, in fact, I have on my computer. I can't bring it up. I wish I could. 
<clears throat> I saw this a long time ago when I used to be on Facebook. I'm not on Facebook anymore. I don't go there. So complete waste of time, in my opinion. Uh, I did see this really funny pie chart. You know how uh, you can make a pie chart in, um, you know, in in um, Excel spreadsheets, whatever. All the spreadsheets do it. It's really easy. <clears throat> and this one was funny. It's just this big round pie that's all red. <laughs> And, and the title is Outcome of, I'm looking at it on my screen, it says Outcome of Political Arguments on Facebook. That's the title, Outcome. And in green, it says, you change your mind. And in blue, it says, they change their mind. And in red, it goes, no one changes anything and everyone's pissed. And, and you got to understand the whole pie chart is red. There's no, there's, there's no green or, or blue on it. So I love it. I love everything about that thing. Because that's true. You're not going to change somebody's mind. You're not, and, and they're not going to change yours. So why talk about it? All right. Why, why talk about it? That's why here we really don't want to talk about it because it, it's just not going to move the ball down the field, you know, uh, but I am happy to report. I mean, what I will do here is I will report what I see and, and what um, what's happening, you know, and I'm happy to do that. Um so here we go, Glory. Uh, two in the house have COVID, and on top of that, they are vaxxed. Bingo. There you go. All right. So, uh, Glory, <clears throat> you you need to go. I'll tell you, answer you in just a second, Steve. Um, Glory, go to my website. Go to my website right now, askthebuilder.com, and type into the search engine COVID, C O V I D. Just do that. Read my story. Re and then, but most importantly, read what Kathy wrote. My wife, she's the one who saved my life. Re she wrote this big section that goes into all the drugs, uh, all about quercetin, um, zinc. Go read that right away and get get um, get your two get those two people in your house on quercetin. It, these are over the counter stuff you can get. You don't need a prescription. Uh, all right, it's going to save their lives. All right, simple as that. Uh, Steve. Kenosha, uh, it's quiet. That that was all just um, that was just a quick flare up, a quick blow up. You have to understand, Steve. Uh, here in America, this is how bad it is. This is, in other words, um, I'll say this. I'll, I'll, I'll go off on a little tangent here. I, I'm having a good time, by the way. I'm happy to talk about this stuff. Um, so, I've done expert witness work for at least twenty years. All right. I've been, worked on some really big cases. My let, and I'm not trying to drop names here. All right. But the last case I worked on, I was walking on the roof of the Brazilian ambassador's house on the Caribbean island of Antigua. All right. He had a problem with his roof. All right. So what happens is when you're an expert witness, uh, you get deposed. And what, a, what deposed means is that if you're if you're not an attorney, here's how this game works. So somebody sues somebody else. And so what they have to do, it's almost like playing poker in a way. And what, especially if you play, uh, I don't know, let's say you're playing seven card stud or five card stud. And at the end of the hand, you have to show your cards. So you can see who won, who's got the best cards, you know, but until such time you're, you know, you're, um, your betting and whatever. All right. So in lawsuits in America, the way it works is you go through depositions and a deposition is where I have to be in an attorney's office and they have a court reporter and the attorney for the other side, like if I'm representing, here it is, let's just say it this way. Let's say I'm representing you in a lawsuit where you're suing your builder. And I, um, the, the, the builder's attorney will arrange for a deposition where he gets to ask me any question he wants. And it's all recorded. It's, a, it's, it's, it's all this is going to be entered as evidence in the trial. If it gets that far, they rarely do. All right. So anyway, <clears throat> before a deposition, and I've been on the witness stand, I've got, I've already gone up to the trial. I mean, most things don't go to trial, but I've been in the courtroom. Here's what you say. You say, you have to swear. You go, I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. All right, think about that. Most people don't think about that. I swear to tell the truth. That's pretty obvious. But what is the whole truth? Why is it important to tell the whole truth? It's important to tell the whole truth 
you know this if you're a parent, <laughs> if you've got any kids, that something goes wrong and you start to interrogate them and, and you only get half the story, right? All right. You're not getting the whole truth. <laughs> and if the kids have had a chance to stick together, you're... <laughs> It takes a lot of work to figure out what happened. All right. So anyway, so I don't know where, why I started to go down that pathway, but, um, oh, so I know what it was, Kenosha. So anyway, Steve, um, here in America, what's going on, this is almost hard to believe. There's so much money involved in holding power in America. You're talking billions and billions and billions of dollars. You can enrich yourself that the deep state and the, the left, they have organized and they have on the payroll, I think about this, they have on the payroll paid um, instigators. I would just call them riot instigators. And they're just, they're basically like firemen. So think about firemen who sit around a firehouse. So they're sitting around a firehouse, they're polishing the fire truck, they're playing checkers, whatever, they're doing training. Um, and then all of a sudden the alarm bell goes off and choo, they get on their stuff and out they go the door. All right. So that's what's going on. So these paid instigators just sit around their house. They've got their cell phones and they can be just about anywhere in America in 24 hours. So when the deep state wants to cause trouble, like they did in Kenosha, the people that you see on TV that are causing these problems, they are not people that live in Kenosha. The people that were causing the trouble could have been, they could have lived in Florida, in Texas, in California, whatever. That's what's going on. So they send them into these things like guerrilla warfare to cause this trouble, to get all these, to get everybody whipped up and get all this on the news. And then it just goes away, you know? So, so that's a lot of what's going on. And anybody who tells you differently, they're lying to you or they don't know. So Kenosha right now, it's um, quiet. Uh, but the town has not been rebuilt. <laughs> it's just, if you drive there, it looks like going through Berlin in 1946 or London in, you know, 1945. Ha, what did London look like in 1945? Oh my gosh. I mean, it probably took you guys 10, 15 years to rebuild London. All right. So that's Kenosha today. Same thing with Milwaukee. All those cities that you saw, if you saw those on the news, where they were burning, they're all still torn up. They're, you know, all those, very few of those buildings have been rebuilt. All right, um, I'll get caught up. Uh, yeah, exactly. You're exactly right, Missing. It's still tense in the Chicago, in that corridor. You're exactly right. But I'm on, every month I'm on the radio station, WLIP, as a guest. Maybe I'll, I'll start letting you know when I'm going to be on. Uh, I should probably do that. Uh, I haven't been, I was just on last week and I'll let you know here when I'm going to be on the next day and you can listen to me live, but I'm on a radio station there. I, the, the company that the, the husband and wife that own the radio station, we just talk about anything. We talk about stuff like this, um, but they run my column in their newspaper, but he, he's in grounds, ground zero. I mean, his business is right there in downtown Kenosha. So just look it up, look up where, where the, uh, Headquarters WLIP, WLIP. So WLIP, go look it up. Put it on Google Maps, WLIP, Kenosha, Wisconsin. All right. Um, all right. Yeah, exactly. They do that on purpose. That's just so you know what's going on. This whole race thing. You want to know this the truth about the race stuff? Go onto YouTube, type Morgan Freeman, type for, Morgan Freeman 60 Minutes interview. He the, he tells exactly like it is. If you want to stop racism, stop talking about race. He says, he said in this interview with Mike Wallace years ago, he said, you want to stop racism? It's so simple. He said, stop calling me a black man. I'll stop calling you a white man. In fact, why would anybody even bring that up in conversation? Why would you say a black man? That's Look at that black man over there. Why, why would anybody even say that? You just say, look at that man over there. All right. Anyway, that's what's going on with this whole thing. They're they're they keep making stuff racial when it's really not. All right. So <clears throat> I don't like it. Call it a booster. It's just, it's just another series. <laughs> yeah. When was the last time you got 
boosters for those other uh, things that you got as a kid. You don't. You don't get them. Uh, you don't get them. All right. So. <laughs> uh, exactly. You're exactly right, Steve. They're, you're not immu immunized. I'm immunized because I had it and survived. Um, yeah, there were some, yes, there are some hardcore activists that actually do live in Seattle and Portland. I know that, but not all of them. There were people that were flown in. Uh, <laughs> on that, I don't know. I don't know what kind of insurance they have on that radio station, Steve. I don't know. I, I have no clue. Um, but um, it's, um, it's they're great people. Uh, the owners, they're one Frank and Kim uh, Carmichael. I'm sure you can see it on their about page. They're just wonderful people. Uh, we ha I, I, so I did a live radio show for 12 years. It started in 1994 and I, and I actually ran the board, which, you know, I'm a tech guy. So I loved turning all the dials and all the sliders. I love doing that. All right. So, um, anyway, <clears throat> uh, what I liked, the reason I continue to do their show when they invite me on is because what I loved about radio, and it's kind of like what I love about this live streaming, I don't know what you're going to type. I don't know what comment you're going to say, and I feed off of that. So on when I'm on Frank and Kim's show, I don't know what they're going to ask me. Sometimes they ask me about home improvement stuff. Sometimes we never talk about home improvement. I'm only on for about 25 minutes. That's plenty of time, but we, we always have a good time. Uh, so, uh, you know, and Frank and I are not, we don't see eye to eye on everything, which is good, but we're respectful with one another. He knows how to ask the right questions. Um, yeah, tetanus, but that's not, tetanus is not, um, that's different. Tetanus is not like polio. All right. <laughs> and I'm not even a doctor and I know that. Um, okay. So, um, so Way to adventures. Here's 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 how to offset that. That's a really good point. This is I've been pounding this lately. You need to go to the Boy Scout. Um, you need to go to the Boy Scout troop leader and say this. Just say, um, what's the purpose of the vaccine? You just ask that question and see if he's smart enough to answer it. And what his answer should be is that, well. If you're vaccinated, then you won't get the disease, supposedly, the illness, and then you can't spread it. Oh, okay. All right. I right. got it. All right. That's pretty much how they're supposed to work. So then you go, well, um, what happens if you get COVID? Uh, do you now have natural immunity? Like yellow fever? And, and, and you can have the whole laundry list, like Ebola fever. All, you know, you can have a list like 10, 10 line. And he'll say, well, I don't know. He may not say anything because he may be a dumb. He may be adult. He may not know anything about medicine. The answer is, yes, you have natural immunity. So you would say, well, my son had COVID. He's got better immunity than the, than the kids that are coming here that are being given the experimental biological agent. So you have to stand up to that. You have to go teach him. You have to go teach that troop. And, and here's what's going on. I'm telling you, it's coming from the top. I get it. Boy Scouts of America has sent an email to all those troop leaders telling them to do that. But you need to get him thinking, and he needs to push back going up going up high, saying, wait a minute, the kids that have COVID, they, um, they've got better immunity than the flipping vaccine. Like me, I, I can't spread COVID now. I'm immune. I can't get it. That's why this has never been about health. It's all about control. All right. All right. <laughs> Don't worry. Someday we'll think of a home improvement question. <laughs> Phone ends. Oh, 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 oh. I am sorry. I'm sorry, Steve. I wasn't reading. No, they do not. Um, they don't take callers. It'd be great if they did. Um, but if you can listen to me and then you might, there might be some way to comment. Um, but I've, we've never had callers. I don't know. They should, just so you know, they should be able to take callers because, I mean, when I, I mean, I know because I used to produce my own show. You know, when I call, I call into the station and they drop me onto the board. If you've never seen a radio control board, usually there's, uh, and, and it is a talk radio station. I know that it is. So on their board of maybe 
it could be 10 or 12 pots, what we call pots wide, per, at least five of them, maybe four are dedicated to phone lines. So they should absolutely, you should absolutely be able to call in and they can drop you onto the board. So that's a really interesting um, question. You should try to do it one day, just even when I'm not on, just, just go ahead and try. I don't know, if you, try it tomorrow, you know? So that, it's a talk radio station, uh, WLIP, you'll see it. Um, all right, uh, let's get caught up here. <laughs> then maybe I'll get out of here. Look at that, one hour and 15 minutes. Feels like five minutes to me. I have a home improvement tip. Get your water connections checked. We had a catastrophic clean water line break in 2019. Wall to the toilet. Yeah, exactly. Um, so your supply line, uh, my my guess would be it was one of those old crappy uh, plastic uh, supply tubes that gets brittle. I'll bet you that's what it was. Uh, the better ones now are the the ones that are, have got the stainless steel. Um, they're very flexible. Uh, they got a stainless steel outer sheathing so that they won't uh, explode. All right. So, um, all right. Uh, yeah. Josh says, my coworkers family all got, look at that, all got COVID a second time. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. Host Nation. I know. I know. I know. But you have to educate the guy. Uh, um Yeah, yeah. Um, during the, my house built in 1997. Yeah, that would be um, that would be about right. That's about when that that type of supply tube was used. So yeah, I would if I would I can tell you right now I would go around the house and change all the supply tubes uh, from the toilet to the shutoff valve. Uh, Fluid Master. If you go to the big box stores or any hardware store, Fluid Master is a brand name here in America. They make a great one. So. If you get Fluid Master brand, they're fantastic. You won't have any trouble. Um, anyway, back to uh, Way to an Adventures. Uh, your wife is a doctor. Um, I'm just telling you, just your wife, I think your wife would be fascinated. Send her to my Ask the Builder, go to askthebuilder.com, type COVID into my search engine, have her read that page. I'd be really interested in her feedback, um, especially what I've got at the top of the page. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, the dishwasher. Um, my dishwasher, yeah, I've got that same really good supply line. They make them very long. Uh, I, I've got like a six foot long one that feeds my dishwasher. So it's, it's safe. And you should also have those for your washing machine. Um, you know, same thing. I ha I've had quite a, a lot of email from people who live in condos. And the sad thing like down in Florida is these condos are multi-story buildings and somebody up on the eighth floor or ninth floor or whatever, 15th floor, they're washing machine pipes break, they're gone. You know, they've, they've come back to, you know, up north in the summertime and then everybody below them gets flooded, you know, because it might take a half an hour, an hour to figure out where the leak is. In the meantime, water's pouring down through the building. It's horrible. So, um, uh, good. Well, good. Yeah. Yeah. Have her look at the, have her look at my column. I'd really be interested to see what she says about it. Um, all right. Um, yeah, yeah, I had, you had a plumber come out. Good. All right. So anyway, if um, you don't have any more questions or comments, I'll get out of here. So 83% of the people want me to, um, uh, you know, to, I'm going to end the poll um, to, to wander. So I, I'll do more wandering. You know, I, I like doing it anyway. I just don't, I don't want us to become an echo chamber here either. You know, we all f feel the same way. And, and um and uh, yeah, great. All right, great. Uh, yeah, like maybe eight. So that's kind of interesting results when you look at the results. Um, eight percent no, and and uh, eight percent maybe. Very interesting. All right, missing. You have a good night too. Uh, Steve, you have a great night. Thanks so much for being here. Uh, I'm having a great time, and uh, <laughs> well, um, we can explore so many topics. We can talk. For example, just remember um, my college degrees in geology. Uh, I'm, I'm also interested in things that you're interested in, just so you know. Uh, I, I Unfortunately, you know, I, I've i got the bully pup pulpit here. You know, I'm the one on camera. I'm the one who's talking. And and, and the, YouTube only gives you 200 characters. I mean, you're, you know, you're on a short leash. You know, it's horrible. Um, 
Oh, okay. So, uh, Steve, here, here, stand by. I'll give you the search. Stand by, buddy. Here we go. You can bookmark this. Um, usually there's a search box on every page of the website, just so you know. But this will also get you the search. All right. Um, thank you, way too. I, I, I'm enjoying being here. Um, and Steve, great. Uh, good night to you too, buddy. Thanks. Uh, thanks for being here. Always wonderful. I'm having a great time. Uh, I'll be back tomorrow. Have no idea what we'll talk about. Once again, though, like I said, I'm very interested uh, in you. I'm, I, I love, love, love hearing about, you know, who you are. I, I know you want to be private. I get that. But I, I'm interested in what you're interested in. You know, your hobbies, all that kind of stuff. Um, we can talk uh, and we can talk hobbies, too. So you're welcome, buddy. Thanks. Uh, thanks for getting rid of all those bad people. Um, <laughs> I you were so right weeks ago. I, I don't know. I just, I don't want to say I didn't believe you, but I just didn't, you know, there's all these malicious people out there, bad people. All right. So anyway, you have a good night. I'm Tim Carter. This has been Ask the Builder. It's been, it's not Ask the Illness Guy. <laughs> it's not Ask the Political Pundit Guy. <laughs> it's just Ask the Builder. All right. <laughs> Shannon. Okay. Yeah. See, I don't know people's names. Okay, great. All right. There we go. So uh, I'll remember that. I, I'm going to write it down. So anyway, um, bye, Shannon. Great to, um, um, you know, it's great to know everybody's name, at least, you know. Uh, it's, it's, people love being called by their first name, all right? It just, it's it makes you feel good. It makes you feel special, and you should feel special. So I, what I really enjoy about this is, you know, I really enjoy making friends with you. I, I, um, I, my son didn't tell me that would happen. What he told me when he told me to start doing it again, he just said, dad, he said, the, it allows the people to interact with you and ask you questions, which they can't really do on your videos. You know, well, they can do it in the comments, but that's not the same. But he didn't tell me that I would develop this friendship. So it would be so cool at some point. I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know how to pull it off. But I'll tell you this. I'll just say this before I end. I would be happy to meet you if you happen to travel to New Hampshire. I don't care when it is. As long as I have a, enough notice, I'm taking you out to dinner. All right. Or we're going to go get an ice cream cone or whatever. Uh, I'm happy, happy, happy to meet you. So I, you know, I have no fear. Um, I, I, whenever I used to travel, I would do meetups in different cities. I would let my subscribers and my newsletter know we would have pretty good turnouts at some places. Uh, it was amazing. So I got to meet my newsletter subscribers. It was always a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, ex exactly right. You do get to feel like you know someone. Exactly. So uh, so missing is Lorraine. Okay, awesome. There, we're starting to know some names here. Let me... Uh, uh, <laughs> so, so, uh, so I, you know, I, I, I got to write this down. Well, I'll be able to see it in the chat, but... Uh, um, I, I, cause I want to, um, <laughs> I, uh, missing Lorraine. All right. Awesome. It's so great. Thank you for sharing your name. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Cause you notice, I mean, I, I've been doing it for weeks and weeks and weeks with Steve. I didn't know what his name was. So, um, anyway, um, yeah, Steve, that's a good idea. Jeez. <laughs> Why didn't I think of that? Maybe we should do a Zoom video. I, I'll, uh, you know what? It's some people might be gone. Let's do that poll tomorrow. Let's do that poll. I'm, I'm happy to do a Zoom thing. Happy to do a Zoom call because on the Zoom, then we can really go wherever we want. I mean, we can have a lot of fun on the Zoom call. All right. Uh, <laughs> okay, got it. All right, got it. Okay. Uh, awesome. <laughs> And Lorraine, Lorraine, am I pronouncing that right? Lorraine, that's how I would pronounce it. My aunt, my aunt Clara was a nun and she wrote a book called Professor Phonics Gives Sound Advice. So she banged phonics into me. So I would pronounce your name Lorraine with the, the first E being a long E. Is that correct? Okay, good. Thank you. All right, Lorraine. 
All right, great. Thank you. I, I hate mispronouncing names. I'm not going to mispronounce Steve's. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Uh, talk about River Force Boat. I, I don't care what the cure. Okay, awesome. Thank you. Okay, yeah, we're going to, we're going to, you, you know, but like I said, um, it's it just, we don't want to get, I'll just say this and then I'll get out of here. We, we just don't want to get deep, 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 I don't think, into politics. Because, like I said, I'm not going to change your mind and you're not going to change mine. So, it's just like a, a bunch of wasted electricity, I think. I, I don't know. Let, what I what I would rather talk about, just so you know, maybe I'll talk about this tomorrow. Um, I finally figured out five years ago the true path to true happiness. I mean, how would you like to be happy? I mean, really happy. Um, like every day. And it's not drug-induced. <laughs> it has nothing to do with sugar or any other drug or whatever, or alcohol. Would you like to talk about that? Um, yeah. Uh, okay, Obi, Jason. There you go. So Obi is Jason. So I, I have to have a cheat sheet until I really get them memorized. So you got you got to bear with me, okay? Um, so um, if I goof up your name, you got to let me know. It's just going to take a while. You know, got to remember a lot of names. All right. So. Um, it's great. But anyway, tomorrow I'll do a poll about Zoom. I already think I already know what the answer is going to be. And if it doesn't matter how many people say no, because they don't want to do it, fine. We'll, the rest of us who still want to do a Zoom call, I've got a Zoom account. We'll, 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 do, we'll do a Zoom call. I'm good with that. I'm good with that. Uh, speaking of which, I have to be on one here in, in the United States in an hour and a half. Um, all right. So I'm going to go. Uh, this was a great live stream. I had a great time. I mean... <laughs> I, you can tell by me smiling, but um, uh, Quercetin, bingo, bingo, exactly, exactly, exactly. But you can read the dosage um, that my wife gave me. If you go to my website, so go to askthebuilder.com, you'll see the search engine right at the top, or you see the link I gave Steve. Um, anyway, type COVID into my search engine and then read what Kathy wrote. You'll see the dosage, and that's really important because you also have to have the correct dosage of um, the zinc. So really important. All right. Um, thanks. Thank you so much. Um, uh, Shannon, thank you. <laughs> Sorry, I need my cheat sheet, okay? It's, I'm not going to get it all at once. I'm not going to get it all the first day. You have to cut me some slack if I get your name wrong, okay? Just bear with me, I, I and I don't do it. On, I won't hurt you. All right. All right. So I'm out of here. I uh, had a great time. Thanks so very much. Uh, if I make a mistake or I start, you know, running off the rails, let me know. I, I don't want to. I don't want to mess this up because we're having a lot of fun. Okay. Have a great night. I'm Tim Carter. Ask the builder, and uh, I'm going to hang around just a little bit because I I want to see if one of those bad people tries to sneak a bad link in. So I uh, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for sharing your name. Really appreciate it. Uh, it's nice to know you. So I will be here tomorrow. We're going to uh, probably talk about happiness, you know, how to really be happy. It's so simple. You're not going to believe how simple it is. Well, it can be a little hard. Might There might be a few tough choices, but um, I got some really great stories. All right. Good night. Steve, have a great night over there in the UK. Shannon, Jason, Lorene. <laughs> Thanks so much. Have a great night. Uh, and... Uh, Adios, adios, man. I, uh, uh, it's, we're going to have a lot of fun on that Zoom call. I can do that right now. We're going to have a blast. All right. Thanks very much. I'm Tim Carter. This has been Ask the Builder.